Anybody out there? Barrett! I think I hear him up ahead. Hey! Here goes. Can anybody hear and me? Push! <laughs> Barrett. Marlene's fine. Huh? Aerith found her. Aerith? Is that the girl they took? Yeah. That's her. Hmm. What the hell's going on? I asked Aerith to find Marlene and take her somewhere safe. And she did. You sure? Hey, where are you going? There have been quite a number of changes from the original story, deviations from the original plot that we've seen in this remake, and of course there will be more to come. But certain events were just simply too important to the original story to not have in the remake, and the destruction of Sector 7 and the death of so many people there was one of them. One thing I do see that they did here, and I do think is probably a good thing, was to show Barrett in a little bit of a different light. In the original game, he was just an emotional wreck over the thought of everybody in Avalanche being killed and Marlene being killed and every, everyone else in Sector 7 being killed, punching and shooting at the wreckage until he's told that Marlene might still be alive, in which case he picks himself up. But in this one, even before he knows that things might not be as bad as he thinks. He sort of uses that moment to, in his interaction with Tifa there, he says to hold on to that anger, to use it as a weapon against Shinra, I guess. There's a reason why he's the leader of Avalanche in this. 
I said, where you going? Aerith's house. It's in the Sector 5 slums. And that's where Marlene is? Where we hope she is. Tell me she is. Give me something to hang on to. Even if she's not, I won't blame you for it, I swear. Who am I kidding? I'd probably try to tear your head off. Hey Tifa, know anything about ancients? I know I've heard of them at least. They come up in planetology books. Meant to be the original stewards of the planet. Could even commune with it, talk to it and stuff. That must be why the Turks wanted her so badly. Within my veins flows the blood of ancients. This planet is my birthright. You have failed again, I see. But through suffering, you will grow strong. Isn't that what you want? It's nothing. Let's go. Cloud had lots of visions of the, his past, or something like that. In the original game, he would suddenly flash and have a certain memory, or have a vision of something. Similar to what we saw there, but his bizarre interactions with Sephiroth are something new. Not that Cloud never had any references to Sephiroth in those visions before, but he never seen them, never seen Sephiroth in the original game the way he does here. And the way Sephiroth speaks to him is so odd. It's almost as if Sephiroth is, in a sense, breaking the fourth wall. In the sense that he, he seems to be aware that things are different, that this isn't the original well, story. This is a fine mess. How bad is it here? Compared to Sector 7, we're doing fine. But that's hardly an accomplishment. Well, at least this time, characters are aware, seemingly more aware of the fact that Sector 7 was destroyed. You guys run into Jesse at the pillar? Yeah. Biggs, too. They were both in pretty Let bad shape. Through, damn it. Let me through. But Wedge wasn't up there with them. He got out. All right. It was left a little bit ambiguous what happened to the members of Avalanche in the original game. You can pretty much say that they died, but you never actually saw any of them die. You saw them injured, and the plate collapsed, and probably they didn't get out, but you don't see it happen. I've been thinking, y'all. We gotta go find the others. Huh? If we don't look for them, who will? Uh, right. Hey, Cloud. Gonna need your help with it too. Right. This game chooses to play with that idea. Sort of explore kind of the little side aspects of the game that the original never really got around to answering those questions. What did happen to Avalanche? Now, of course, Jessie was found on the ascension of the pillar, and she wasn't dead at the time, at least in the original game. Um. Biggs, same thing. Wedge fell from the pillar, but wasn't dead. Not yet, anyway. So what happened to them in the original game? You don't you don't really find out. Not for certain, anyway. This is Sector 5, right? So where is this place you said Marlene is? Where I think she is. It's a house on the other side of town. Well, come on, then. Pick up the pace. I'm going as fast as you are. It never really made any sense to me why 
Aerith was never able to be captured before she actually was. Because it seems as though the Turks were willing to do whatever they were willing to do, or whatever they had to do, in order to capture the last of the Ancients. Yet, Aerith was allowed to live in Sector 5 for a number of years without being captured. And it was only when she felt like she didn't have a choice, like, oh, we'll let the kid go if you come with us. And that's the way it was portrayed in the original game as well. Aerith was living in Sector 5, and it was only when she had the choice of going with them or giving up Marlene, letting Marlene go, that she went with Shinra. And it doesn't really make any sense. Like, why didn't they capture her before? That's the house. Marlene! Marlene! Where's Marlene? Is she here? Barrett! <sighs> Sorry, I'm Barrett. Marlene's my little girl. Uh, uh, mm. Marlene, she's got short hair. She's cute as a button, but with the heart of an angel. She was wearing uh pink. She was wearing a she's pink dress today. Upstairs. Huh? Oh. <sighs> I said she's sleeping. Uh, I want to see her, too. Come on. Let's go look in on her. Keep it down. Don't wake her. Maybe you should join your friend upstairs. Marlene, my baby. Thank God. Shinra has my daughter now. I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who asked her to go get Marlene. We'd only just met, but she was so kind and helpful. I took advantage of her. It's not your fault. It was only a matter of time before she ended up back there. <sighs> Because she's an ancient. Is that it? So she told you about that. She must trust you all a great deal. Yes, Aerith is an ancient. Probably the last one living. She's not my daughter. Not by blood, I mean. If that's what you were wondering. <sighs> About 15 years ago. My husband, he'd been shipped off to fight on the front lines. But then I received a letter saying he'd be home for a bit. So when the day came, I went to the station to meet him. But, he didn't come. I couldn't help fearing the worst, even then. But I told myself his leave must have been postponed, that he'd been delayed. Every day I went, to wait and to pray. And that's how I met her, her and her mother. I thought maybe they'd run away from Wall Market, or that they were topsiders fallen on hard times. I'd seen that sort of thing a lot. Take Aerith somewhere safe. Those were her mother's dying words. My 
husband had been away for so long, and I was lonely. So I convinced myself the safest place for the girl was with me. It took no time at all for her to start feeling like family. She was a real chatterbox. She told me strange stories. Like how she and her mother had escaped from some sort of facility. And how she wasn't sad because her mother had just returned to their planet. Their planet, huh? Yeah, that sounds about right. I didn't understand any of it at the time. When I asked if she meant one in the sky, she said no. This one, right here. I mean, what can you say to that? Mommy, don't be sad. That's what she said to me one day, out of the blue. So I asked her, what's wrong? A man you really, really loved just died. His heart came a long way to say goodbye. But he couldn't stay because he had to return to the planet. I didn't believe her, of course. And then, a few days later, I received a letter saying my husband had been killed in action. Things like that, she'd just know. It was a lot to deal with, but we were happy. <laughs> and then came the knock. Coming! <laughs> no! Go away! <laughs> Aerith, you know you're not just any little girl. You're a descendant of the ancients. I had no idea what he meant, so I said, who are the ancients? They were the original stewards of the planet, whose boundless knowledge and wisdom shall guide us to the promised land. <clears throat> Some believe the promised land to be a myth, others an allegory of sorts. But we take the words of the scriptures at face value and believe it to be quite real. Which is why Shinra would like very much for Aerith to help You're us- You're wrong! I'm not an ancient! But Aerith, even when you're all alone, don't you hear voices whispering secrets? No, never! <clears throat> but all three of us knew that wasn't true. That man knew exactly who Aerith was, where she'd come from, and what she could do. They knew where she was, but they didn't just take her? Doesn't sound like the Turks I know. She had to come willingly, otherwise it wouldn't work, they said. That's why, even if they did take her away, I'm sure she's still being treated like a guest. And that they'll send her straight back home, once they get what they need. I doubt it. You're not planning anything, are you? Don't make things worse than they already are. If I lost her, too, I don't know if I could... if I could ever... Just don't. Cloud, maybe she's right about this. Maybe they'll let Aerith go when it's all over. Maybe we'd be better off waiting a little while. Let's head back to Sector 7. Got things to take care of. Like checking up on the bar. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I guess that about does it for this episode. 
tiefer. Hear that? 